know about that anime series Keijo that concluded very recently and it actually gained a lot of popularity. A lot of people were talking about it because even though it wasn't the most well written series, it was just very funny and it was dumb fun. It was a series you could just turn off your brain and just sit down and have a good time. That's the type of series Keijo was. Well, apparently there was some drama going on with the manga creator and kind of how he had to quickly end his manga series. And so this article popped up on Anime News Network, and link in the description if you want to read it for yourself, by the way, but I want to read this article, and I kind of want to say my thoughts on this, and then look at both sides, and then say my piece of what's going on here, because it's honestly kind of sad, but at the same time, it's something that does happen quite often, and I can understand both sides somewhat. So, kind of let me dive into this article and let's discuss it. Manga creator Daichi Sotoyomi posted details regarding the ending of his Keijo manga series on his blog on this past Sunday. He began by saying that he was told even before the anime aired that he should finish that the, he should finish the manga after the anime finished. So, before the anime even aired, like before the first episode came out, he was already told by his publishers and all that the magazine like in that series, get that series out of here, like just it, wrap it up, end it before the anime is done, or after the anime is done, like, as soon as it finishes, end it right then and there. So, basically, from this line alone, it's like saying, we don't care how popular the anime gets, we want you to conclude your manga series, but we're just done with it, so just get that, you know, manga out of here. That's kind of what you can get from this entire sentence. He denied rumors that the manga was cancelled due to poor sales of the anime's home video volumes. For instance, many like to discuss that, how we might get continuations for se series or seasons or whatever could be because of cells, and that's a big part of it. Without cells, we couldn't get continuations, and so many were speculating why the manga, you know, just ended like it did, like it got cancelled, was because of the anime cells. It sold very poorly. And, the, you know, the writer came out and said, no, it wasn't because of that. So let's read further on. He specifically addressed the rumors that the anime's first home video volume only sold 715 units. Upon seeing the rumors, he immediately contacted the anime staff to confirm the number. So, he heard that he only sold, like, a 715 units of his, you know, anime volume, and he was like, whoa, what the hell, that's actually very, very low. And so he contacted, you know, the stores, the companies, all that to see what the true number was because he was very curious. The anime staff informed him that the figure was incorrect and that the first volume had sold more than that. He said that the figure had the numbers of digits wrong. From what I read from other sources, apparently it wasn't 715, it was actually like 7,000 something, so that's way higher than 715 units. But anyways though, he admitted that the manga's cancellation was due to his own lack of skill and the circumstances between him and the publisher. So, he admitted that it was because of his lack of skill why the manga, manga was cancelled, but also because of whatever was going on between him and his publisher. Publisher. He wrote with some hesitation that the manga publisher Shogakukan could have given him more support. So basically, he came out and said, like, if my publisher would have kind of given me a better helping hand, maybe my manga wouldn't have been cancelled. So right then and there, for him to go out and say that, he probably burnt a bridge or two because of that. That's, yeah, it's like, you know, yelling at your boss, and then the boss is like, well, we're not doing work with you anymore, so he probably hurt himself with that. Could have given more support. He claimed that there was a period of time where he had asked Shogakukan for more assistance for a year and a half, but the publisher told him they could not find him one. Before he had to wrap up the series, he was searching for assistance. Not just one, just assistance in general. It could be anyone for a year and a half, but he never got one because the publisher said, like, nah, you know, uh, we can't find you one. I don't know exactly if it's because they didn't try hard enough to find him assistance, or if they just, you know, they couldn't find him in general, but apparently he asked for a year and a half for assistance, he never received any, which, you know, that's, yeah, that's not good. A manga could not getting any assistance, that's gonna obviously degrade the quality, ruin deadlines, all of that, it's, it's gonna be bad. He worked on the manga only with one assistant, so throughout the entirety of his series, he basically only worked with himself and one assistant, which there's just no way in hell, there's just no way a mangaka with the type of work schedule they have, regardless of what type of series it is, like even if the, the plot's brain dead, regardless, you're going to require more support. Y even, I give Hiro Mashima a lot of hell, but even he probably puts in a lot of time and effort to, at the very least, draw his series, because his series does look very good. So, I'm not going to put down Hiro Mashima for his quality of art style. Maybe his writing, 
but not his art. And I admit, he does put a lot of effort into his art. And so, I know for a fact, even someone like Hiromashima, he definitely needs his assistance. And so, any mangaka trying to work with just one assistant in their self, there's just no way you can do that. You're, you're going to eventually hit a wall, and you're not going to be, over, uh, be able to overcome it, and you're going to start hitting deadline after deadline, quality's going to drop, just, it's going to be very bad. It's going to be a mess. And that's kind of what we can see already going on here. And at one point, he ended up doing too much work that he passed out for an hour. So, this is what he stated. This is what the writer of Keijo stated. He said he only had one assistant. At one point after all of this, he just was doing work and he passed out for an hour in the middle of work. Now, I've been talking about this very recently. I've been talking about overwork to animators getting very bad pay. And I've even mentioned slightly that mangaka also have it hard as well. I mention it quite often in my, you know, manga chapter reviews. Depending on when series go on break and stuff, I usually talk about this. I've talked about it when it came to Nakaba Sensei, when he took, like, his month off. I've talked about it constantly when it comes to Oda and him taking his week breaks. I've talked about it when it comes to Horikoshi when he needs a break. I've done this quite often. I've always said that, you know, mangaka obviously they have a hard time because if you've seen Oda's schedule, what he says, it kind of sheds light into how, you know, the manga industry is and ty their type of work schedule, how they don't really have much time to really rest or sleep. And so what he states here is because of how much he had to work, he was doing like a job for five people, he passed out. He just went unconscious. And that's not healthy. That That's instantly not healthy. You should not push yourself to the point to where you literally pass out because of overwork. That's just not good. We're going to have another situation to what happened to the animator that was also doing Naruto, Bleach, and all that. We're going to have a very similar situation to that. And so this, once again, show, shows how much he was putting effort into a series. He was going all in. This writer clearly was putting in his passion for the series, but obviously in the end result, it still got cancelled, so that's kind of sad. Anyways, though, he had also previously been told that if the anime had one more sponsor... It could have also been broadcasted in Western Japan. He claimed that Shogaku Khan did not sponsor the anime, but admitted that he cannot confirm if this is true. So also, even if he didn't burn a bridge before what his previous comment was, how he could have gotten more support, that obviously just burnt the bridge, because he basically threw Shogaku Khan under the bus. Like, anime fans that like Keijo or whatever, that bought it, support it, manga fans, whatever, Basically, he was telling his fans, like, the reason why I had to cancel my series if you like it, or the reason why that there's probably not going to be a continuation of the anime, is because of, you know, the company. My, my publisher, they threw me under the bus, and so he decided to throw his, you know, company under the bus. He's like, they pretty much didn't sponsor my anime when they could have been that one sponsor, but they didn't want to do it. Even though they had the right or balls to go either way, to say, like, oh, if you had one more sponsor, it could have aired in Western Japan, which that's that's pretty messed up to say to someone, especially if you're not sponsoring them when you can, because you're not a part of the, you know, production committee. So that's, um, it's kind of messed up. And now, like he said, he admitted he cannot confirm if this is true, so it could be false, so we shouldn't say that this is accurate, but the point still stands, though, that comment was made, which is kind of disgusting in general, just saying that, because they already pretty much threw him under the bus, because the series had to end right when the anime wrapped up, so there was no hope of saving a series regardless, so it's kind of just rubbing salt into his wound. Now, next part is, uh, Soto Yomi also regretted that the manga was uh, placed towards the back of Weekly Shonen Sunday. Now, this caught me by surprise, because I've heard about, you know, the rankings to placing things in the back and stuff. If you've ever, you know, read Bakuman or if you know the practices of Weekly Shonen Jump, you're probably very aware of how some series get axed. Like, they get completely cancelled. If they fall in the rankings, obviously, they can just get thrown out and then the series just completely ends. And that's kind of very similar to what happened to, you know, Bleach and Toriko. They kind of fell out of popularity and grace and then they just were no longer being published because the, you know, Weekly Show and Jump, they wanted that out of there. And so basically he says, like, he regretted that his manga every single week in Weekly Show and Sunday, it was placed in the back. And if your chapter is placed in the back, automatically it means that there's not a lot of people that really care about the series. That means that it does have a lot of popularity and the magazine doesn't think that it's worthy of their time. Now, I have also heard things to articles in the past that some publishers, like Weekly Show and Jump, they can actually pick and choose what they want in certain 
you know, specific orders. Like, if they want, like, something in first place or second place, they could put it there, but if they don't like something, like, the actual person of the company, they don't like this certain piece of literature, they could just throw that stuff into the back of the magazine, which clearly might have happened here with Keijo, for instance. There obviously is some form of problem between the mangaka and the publisher. There, there, there's obviously a problem there. There's definitely some form of beef or drama between them, and clearly because of this, it resulted in probably the cancellation. And for the series to be placed in the back, it's because of lack of popularity, but also because the company had no faith in him, and to begin with, they threw him in a corner and said, you're worthless, and they just didn't care to even try to, you know, advertise it at all. So anyways, continuing on, he would have liked to portray more of the planned story and admitted that he sped up the story, but said that in the end, half a year wasn't enough. So with the half a year he was given before he had to wrap everything up, it still wasn't enough to, you know, conclude what he wanted to conclude. He revealed that he will put extra chapters in the 16th, 17th, and 18th volumes of the manga. In the end, Sotoyomi thanked Weekly Shonen Sunday for giving him the chance to serialize the manga, the readers, the staff of the television anime, the people in charge of marketing, and the voice actors for the anime. He says that their hard work made him able to last half a year before the manga was cancelled. So, basically, the series, it was cancelled. Now, let's just look at this at both sides, okay? Article side, now let me set this article to, you know, the side. Looking at it from both angles, okay? Honestly, I want to side with the manga, because it makes me sad. It makes me personally sad that the writer... He obviously had a lot of passion. You clearly see that how much he put into trying to write his series. And obviously it wasn't working out. Like the series probably wasn't gaining popularity. It wasn't doing that well. And probably people really weren't that interested in it. And I, I feel like it's sad that he lost his passion. It sucks that he didn't have assistance. And pretty much the way it looks, it looks like he was set up to fail. Like he was destined to fail and not be able to continue his manga. I mean, even along the lines of saying, like, you need to wrap up your manga before even the anime airs, it's basically saying your anime is not going to be popular, it's going to be pointless, and that, you know, just get out of here, do something else. And so, usually when an anime is made, it's there to promote the manga or the original source, but for them to, say, wrap it up when the anime ends, it's kind of like saying... The anime obviously is going to make your series popular, even though it kind of did. I mean, Kenjo definitely gained some popularity thanks to the anime. The publisher pretty much said, like, nah, just wrap it up, it's pointless, just get out of here. And I feel like the reason why they wanted him to keep it around until the anime ended is probably because they wanted to piggyback off some money. For instance, they wanted to get some money from the anime, the sales and stuff, to sell the manga, and then they were just going to throw him under the bus. That's what I feel like that was for. For instance, they wanted to get some quick money, then just toss them out. That, that's what I assume they wanted to do. Now, let's look at this from the perspective of the company. Now, in all honesty, I don't like what happened to the writer. Honestly, I wish that didn't happen. But at the end of the day, it is a company. And companies, they have to put their own self-interest first. That, that's just how it is. That's how companies are. That's how the world runs. I wish the world didn't work like that, but that's how the world is. It's a cruel and awful place and it sucks. It really does. But you have to accept it because that is reality. And even if the writer was thrown under the bus, there could have been more effort done. At the end of the day, it's a company. If it really was selling that well, I don't think they probably would have continued to write him off. Most likely, it wasn't doing that well. And so they just decided to just axe it, get it out of here before they could just do something else, something new that will obviously gain popularity. And so I understand the company's viewpoint of why they did it, because obviously they want to make money. And if it's not making money, something isn't, obviously they need to get that out and then they need to bring something else in that makes them money. And so I understand the company's point of view and I also understand the writer's point of view as well. And I will say that I'm conflicted. I want to side more with the writer, but at the same time, I understand the company and their actions. But I feel like they could have been a little bit more supportive. Or, you know, in this case, human. I mean, I felt like the way I read this article, it felt like they didn't really have that humanity when they did this to the man. Like, it feels like they just didn't care. They acted like a machine and just didn't care at all. They Like, they killed this man and they didn't care at all. They just ended this man and... Like, okay, they, they just move on, and they didn't even try to be nice about it. So, I feel like they could have handled it better, but I wasn't there to really know how they handled it. 
But I will say, however, that I feel like there is a deeper problem here. I feel like there was something going on between the mangaka and the company in general. Like, I don't think it just came down to poor cells or whatever. I honestly think it came down to some form of drama inside the workplace. That, that's why I'm assuming, because stuff like that can happen, honestly. You can have bosses and stuff not like a certain employee, and then they try to get rid of them. That, that, that happens. I know. So... Maybe something like that happened, but it sucks. It's a tragic story. I feel bad. I just hope that the writer doesn't give up and tries to make something new, and hopefully it sells well. I, I really do. I support the writer's, you know, endeavors or whatever he wants to do. So let me know your thoughts. How do you feel about this article? I love you all so much. Please be safe. Chibi out.